Hello, it's Terry from Terry's Train of Thought here on Coast FM. And on the phone with me now is the one and only Speedo Mick. Hello, Mick. Hello, Coast FM. I'm on my way to, uh, to the spot where I stopped yesterday. Uh, yeah, how are you yeah. feeling after yesterday? Because it was oh, horrendous. Mate, I'm not messing on. You know, yesterday, and I, and I know it's not. it wasn't half as cold as it was in Scotland, but yesterday... I really did think that I need to get in here because I'm going to end up uh, It was just, it was painful. It was horrendous. Yesterday was a horrendous day to be in a pair of knickers walking down. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> it was terrible, mate. It was so painful. So I can't imagine how you were feeling in that. Oh, mate, it was just so honest. It was just like every tiny little wisp. The fear that hit your body was like, or any rain dropped that hit your body. It was just su- super painful, mate. It was like it was like getting electrocuted. I couldn't really explain how, how, how bad yesterday was. How but, far uh, did you walk yesterday? Well, I got thirteen miles. Got into thirteen miles. Wow. You know what I mean? It was supposed to have been twenty-two yesterday. Yeah. So I'm now going back. I'm supposed to have a day off today. So I'm now going back. To where I finished yesterday to finish the last uh, nine miles or whatever it is. So on your day off, you've still got to go and do it? Yeah, I'm going to go and do it, yeah, because, uh, you know, I, I need to do the mileage, you know what I mean? I've got to, I've got to, otherwise, I'm going to have to keep f- doing an extra three miles each day for the next three days. Yeah. So I'd rather just go and do this next, you know, just get it out the way, get it done. I've got to do it, it's, it's, a, must, it's a must do. Absolutely. Even though we're starting so late, you know what I mean? Yeah. So where are you at the moment? Stow- is it Stourport Services? Well, we're in... Um, I tell you, where, where we're staying is uh, Tin Hay. Yeah. Tin Hay in, in... Do you know where that is? I know where that is, yeah. Yeah, so that's where we're staying. So we, we, we've been given accommodation yesterday. And so, sorting down is where we're going to start this walk, where we finished yesterday. And uh, we're walking back to Tine, where we'll be staying another night. You know, some yeah. of these putting us up once again. How do you, you know find I mean? it getting getting accommodation for your walks? Oh well, it's just been unbelievable. The hospitality and the love we've been shown. You know, I mean, there's there's, uh, there's three of us here now, so I've got a little a little team, and everybody's just feeding us. They don't let us. I mean, if he had any pockets, he wouldn't let me put my hands in. <laughs> 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 do you know what I mean? But it's been. I've been honestly, it's. I get to see the best in humanity on a daily basis. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, everybody's uh, grati- everybody's uh, gratitude and, 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 and kindness and, and uh, you know what I mean? Don't you you so kind of me. rely on that as you're going up and down, don't you? I do, me, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. I do rely on, I rely on the hospitality of, of, well, basically the nation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and... Um, it gives me a massive boost when I see it and when, you know, I see the generosity that's shown towards me. That's amazing. Not just, not just money. I, it just gives me a massive boost and it keeps me going. That stuff keeps me... That's my fuel for the next mile. Yeah. Because that's how I'm working, how I have to work it. Now it's just one mile after another. Sometimes just one footstep. Yesterday was just one step, one foot in front of the other yesterday. Yeah. You know what I mean? How uh, many but yeah. How many trips have you done now? Well, this will be um I've done I've done I've done a couple of la uh, Johnny Groats to Lands Ends. I've done a two thousand five hundred mile in twenty twenty uh twenty 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 one. Yeah, wow. I've w- I walked to from Liverpool to Lyon. Uh, I've done a, I've done a few um a few trips from London to to Liverpool and then Liverpool to London. You know, um uh, one from London to Bournemouth, and uh, I don't think I think that's about it. And and I swam the English Channel, of course. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 feeling a bit like a veteran, a veteran walking at the moment. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this is it then? Because I heard it was your last tour. Yeah, no, I, I I've literally yesterday is is. Uh, that that's how I do my walks. I always do them in the winter, so it, you know right. it takes a hell of a lot out of my body. Oh yeah. Know? And uh, so you know I don't want to, you know I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to <laughs> damage myself. And and I think I might have, besides from that as well, you know looking after myself. I think I might have just about done enough to uh, you know to to do a little bit to 
you've certainly done more than than most people will do walking <laughs> that's yeah, for sure yeah most definitely well it'll be six when i get to the end of the year you know god willing like i'll uh, it'll be six thousand miles i'll have walked wow. all in with all the other ones so uh, i'll have be uh, beefy both of them yeah you know what i mean i'll have beat him there i don't think he's i don't think he's walked that many i'm going to check that out in a minute but i don't <laughs> think he has if he has i might have to con- continue to i'll have to start walking back <laughs> <laughs> When did you first pull on the speedos? Oh, that was in two thousand and sixteen. Right. That was my first challenge. Was that was the um, was the channel? It was the channel swimming. You have to wear oh, a pair okay. of speedos, which I didn't know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I'm no way. I'm not wearing a pair of speedos. No chance. I'll you know I'll get ridiculed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got over myself, you know, and um, and then I just went to Everton's football ground celebrating the fact that I had swam the English Channel, which was a miracle in itself. I'd never had a swimming lesson before. Wow. I, uh, before I booked the boat. You know, I'm all in. Teddy, I'm all in, mate. When, when I say I'm going to do it, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean, I just, I put everything into it, you know what I mean? Every uh, That's fantastic. Because yeah. I kind of, I heard of your your walking tours and you've yeah. become a bit of a national legend for it yeah yeah well you so know, it all started really like, with a swim it all started with this well it all started with me doing a little bit of charity work doing uh what was it uh, a couple of marathons and then triathlons a few triathlons wow. i was just li- literally putting my hand that loads of stuff that i'd never put put my hand in at when um i got into recovery i'm 21 years clean and sober wow you know, and uh, like I say, tell every everyone really, and, and you know, I'd lost everything. We uh, desire to be here as well. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, me, me, me dignity, me, me home, me family, me self respect was all gone. So everything that anybody ever uh, lives the life for, really, you're looking for in life, I, I, it's all gone. So I read um, a, a little bit on your website, and yeah. I must admit, one thing I've I've always, because I've always had an answer for my children about how people live their lives. One answer I was never able to give them was, why are there homeless people? So it's incredible to see your story. And I think the quote that really got me was that you made a couple of decisions that you, would you say you regret those decisions? Or were they just right for you at the time? Um, well, yeah, it, it, you know what? You could go into a literally three hours of dialogue about that stuff. You know what I mean? But yeah. see, the thing is, I, I don't believe. I mean, I would never wish any that, that whatever. Um, I'd never wish what happened to me or what I put my own self through on my worst enemy. I really wouldn't. It was a terribly dark place. It was, um, you know. But I didn't really know why I was doing it. But I do now. I've got a. I've got a. You know, I've got a, you know, we got an understanding of why I was turning in on myself. I was, you know, I was making myself suffer. Yeah. Basically. You know, when I was, I was killing myself in instalments. And, they, you know, I know now that, that that's what I was doing, but I didn't know then. But it was all through childhood trauma, mental health issues, and, of course, addiction, you know. Mm. And, um, so, but as far as the question is concerned with the, uh, well, why is there homeless people? There's homeless people. There's as many reasons why there are, there are there are homeless people as there are homeless, basically. Yeah. There's so many different reasons. You know, there's a lot of people who you wouldn't. You just. I mean, they've lived a, 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 an amazing life, you know, and then they've lost the wife. They've lost. They've gone through a divorce, or other husbands. They've gone through a divorce, or they've lost them. You know, they've 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 died and they've just broken down and they've given up on themselves you know yeah and uh, there's all kinds so it's not just drugs and alcohol there's there's so many reasons why people are out there like so many and for your story was was there a turning point or was it something that you gradually moved towards no, I think they could. I think um, I I could have got the support I needed a long time before it did, you know. But of course, when I say that, you've got to be ready as well. And there's not a, 
there's not many times when a window of opportunity opens, especially for an addict to um, to get to the support that they need. Because you're waiting months, yeah, you know, uh, on end now, all for mental health. You you waiting months, but I got my support um, straight away. Right. So, um, you know, it wasn't off, uh, you know, the national health. It was just off a friend who'd been through what I'd been through. So wow. It, it was it was just peer peer support. Things people weren't in place. People, my, there was no support when when there was a turning point. So I was asking for help, but the, either the people who I was asking di- didn't know what to do about it or didn't have the solutions to my problems. But on this day, on this one day. I was just sitting. I was uh, just sitting, sitting around basically, and someone came. Oh, um, so I think it was the hostel I was in. Mick came, and but I seen him anyway. He was. I was just sitting there wishing. Oh, I wish my life was different. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and he had the willingness to change. And at that, on on that day, and it doesn't last very long anyway. Someone knocked on the door. It was an old friend who used to be um, doing the same things. He looked really well. He was two years clean and sober. He was, uh, and he gave me the support, and he, he basically took me down to London. And uh, so there was a couple of things. The window of opportunity was open because Mick had turned up. He had the solutions to my problems. Yeah. And number three, most importantly, I was willing to, 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 to change that day. That You know what I mean? So that's, so that's what happened, basically. It was like they all, all the stars aligned, and that's what you need. You need that, and that, that was a bit of a miracle. That was a one-off that was a, like winning the lottery that you yeah. know what I mean all, all that all in sync in one day so that's amazing yeah, and looking at the the Speedo yeah. Mick Foundation yeah. you've raised over 800,000 pound already and well it's, well, it's, it's not, yeah it's 900, 975 now oh wow with the, with the, with with the, we've just raised one hundred seventy five thousand on this walk, so it's eight hundred on there, one hundred seventy five thousand. So yeah, so we're twenty five thousand off raising a million quid. That's amazing. You know, we've got a couple of weeks to to, to raise that really. So is it the Speedo Mick Foundation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you give if you give the GoFundMe page a shout out. Yeah. As well, that'd be great. Do you Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Because otherwise, it, it'll just gonna go onto the it'll go onto the foundation, and it won't get registered onto the GoFundMe, and people won't be able to. It won't go up to the million. Then it's not getting counted that way. You see. Okay. So what do, you know, do you know the GoFundMe page? Yeah. It, well, it's uh, Speedo Mix Last Stump. Because I'd love to get you over a million. That would be amazing. When do you get to Cornwall? Uh, the 29th. Well, I'll be in Cornwall uh, tomorrow. Right. I think I'll be, be crossing over into the... Well, I'll be finishing on the 29th of April. So we've got a couple of weeks to get you over that final hurdle. Yes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big ask, you know what I mean? There's a lot of... You see, this is what's unbelievable, really, about uh, about this country and the people in it, is uh, the generosity knows no bounds. You know, there's a, there's a cost of living crisis, and yeah. it's a big cost of living crisis there's an energy crisis and yeah people are digging deep in the you know what i mean into the pockets for me and for you know for the foundation to help the most vulnerable in this you know in this country like so it's it's unbelievable it really is it's fantastic it's an amazing it's amazing thing to see it's an incredible cause as well yeah yeah. how do you find the people of cornwall are we as nice as we like to portray Yes, man, you're not to me. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> you're not to me, but I know Cornwall. I lived in Cornwall when I was um, when I was seventeen. Oh, okay. Yeah, lived in UK. You know what I mean. And then I lived in. I lived, and then I went back down there trying to find myself for a long time. After that, as well, I, I kept looking for myself in UK and the Saint Hostel and all that. You know what I mean. And uh, I was already inside me. You know what I mean. Yeah. I was, but I was running round looking. You no, know, I was me really. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So I, I, it was great though. I love Cornwall. I loved people in Cornwall. But they, they can, they can, they can be very. You can be very picky. <laughs> you, can be a bit picky. you can be a bit picky because I wasn't sure on the first dump at all. You know, I wonder whether they'll accept me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not picky, like, but yeah. So they, I know, yeah, I know they're you. Just, they're just unbelievable. You're so 
easygoing and you're easy to talk to and you're, you're doing such a fantastic thing. You wouldn't be saying that if you were in the car with me. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine well, yesterday was a bit well, of a... Uh... Well, yesterday it was, it was, it was. And, and, and I, I've, got to, I've got to tell you, I got a little bit testy yesterday. I got a little bit of... I got a little bit angry, do you know what I mean? Because I was literally freezing and we'll get it, you know, we'll get that on the walks, you know what I mean? People don't see me, I'm just human. Yeah. Just human, mate, you know what I mean? I'm not I'm I'm certainly I'm not a, I'm not a hero or a saint or or uh, or anything like that, you know what I mean? I'm just uh, I'm an average man just trying to do some a few little extraordinary things, that's all. I think it is extraordinary what you're doing. And the fact that you're you're going back on your day off to complete what you couldn't yesterday i mean i was in all day yesterday i I couldn't face going out and there you were in a pair of speedos yeah man taking it all in well it's not raining today mate it's bleeding boiling out there so listen we're just trying to give a little bit back that's all the world's on fire at the moment we're just trying to make a positive difference in it that's that's all we're doing can you can you give can you give me team a little shout out as well we've got paul and we've got dave Yeah, 100%. Paul and Dave. Yeah, Paul and Dave, yeah. The dream team. Fantastic. Yeah, the dream, yeah, the dream team, yeah. They, don't, they, they haven't even given me the second names. I think they've got one of the notes. The three amigos we're calling ourselves. Thanks for yeah. speaking to us, though, mate. Uh, thanks, man. Must be appreciated, mate. Thank you for getting the story out there and, and the awareness. I really appreciate it. You know, we're doing it for mental health as well, by the way. So it's a, it's a massive issue, especially after the pandemic. I think that all comes in into the cost of living crisis as well, doesn't it? That's yeah, It's just yeah, going to make yeah. things worse. So, yeah, man. Yeah, really appreciate what you're doing. Have a great walk. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. So you can check out Mick's final Stomp GoFundMe page if you Google Speedo Mix Final Stomp, that will come up and you can support him on his bid to raise that last £200,000 and then Speedo Mick will have made a million pound for charity. An incredible guy with an incredible story. Thanks so much for talking to us.